everyone. Welcome to another episode of Discovering the Architecture a Middle Path podcast. As usual, I'm hosting it with Sanjeev. Hi guys, nice to see everybody back. So we thought of uh, pick uh, another interesting topic uh, and discuss about uh, enterprise uh, software engineering. Uh, so before jump into the details, uh, we thought of look at the complexity of the uh, enterprises uh, because we are dealing with uh, large enterprises for nearly a decade now. And personally, I think uh, myself and Sanjeeva, we have been working very closely with uh, enterprises for a long time. Uh, so we see this uh, complexity. I think uh, we can start with the movement to the uh, uh, digitization uh, with the uh, system of record layers introduced to the uh, enterprises came in, I think, uh, early uh, 90s, I believe, Sanjeeva, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think you meant to say we've been working on this with large enterprise for almost two decades now. Yes, uh, sorry. And, and uh, building software with larger businesses for a long time. Yeah, I, I think the, the movement of businesses to depend on various systems of record, whether it was a CRM system or ERP or HR system or various other, you know, vertical solutions. You know, if you're a bank, you have different kind of systems. If you're insurance, you have another set of systems. Travel, you have another set of systems. And, and, the, and the model was that you buy one of these digital infrastructures and it's kind of a complete solution for that problem, right? It's, it's a system of record. It's it, all the... All the capabilities there, all the way from, uh, often from hardware to the underlying middleware, they pick the database, they pick the application server, uh, and all the way into applications that the, uh, the customers must use. Yeah, I think at the beginning, there were kind of the siloed teams, mainly focusing on one system of record layer. And uh, the enterprise uh, enterprises started building applications within the system of record layer. So that is uh, uh, what we noticed. And uh, some of the large system of record layers did provide application development within the uh, system as well. Uh, but uh, I think there are a lot of roadblocks and not delivering the value for the business or the expectations that coming from the business uh, didn't completely address with that approach uh, at the beginning. Right. Uh, because obviously from a system of record perspective, the entire world is that one system. But from a business perspective, it's never as simple as buy X from vendor Y and you are now digital and you are now fully whatever, right? Uh, a sense of being digital means having your own digital infrastructure, your own digital experience, your own digital processes. And to get that, you need to go across multiple systems. And and even though some systems, uh, Salesforce, for example, came up with force.com mm -hmm. as a way of trying to build uh, in and around Salesforce as part of Salesforce, and then the, later they bought Heroku. Uh, but that doesn't work also because the universe, uh, you know, whether Salesforce is 80% uh, of the business or 20% of the business, or 10% or 50% varies on the business. And you can't just say, well, Salesforce therefore is the right place to build everything. The same thing is true for ServiceNow or any of the other larger ERP platforms or CRM platforms or ITSM platforms or uh, HR platforms or whatever marketing automation, all these different verticals that we all sit on top of. Yeah, I think that the main issue of businesses uh, from the business side they face, there's no unified view of anything and the decision making was really hard because the information is duplicated across multiple systems and they are working on individual applications. Then that uh, led to this natural move of the next step of uh, digitalization of the stuff uh, into uh, from the digitization into digitalization and started uh, integrating multiple system of record layers by using various integration technologies. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, th I think the step one of this sort of was the early 2000s and uh, maybe the 2010s where the concept of the enterprise service bus, bus took off. 
yeah. as hey we we obviously need to connect these together it's not fun fun enough having uh, different systems where there was a human being connecting the system together and of course today we we still have uh, we also have rpa right robotic process automation yeah. uh, as a major uh, you know value creator in the enterprise because it basically replaces with the ro- uh, human being with the with the software to still move data from one to another um and and then integration esb and so on uh, automated some of that integration to some extent the things that are possible uh, but the real benefit started coming when these systems started offering apis so instead of just hard coding and doing some you know low level connection you could now build actual digital experiences sitting on top of all these systems and treat all of them as equal contributors to the final experience that you're going to deliver yeah i think the esp started the process but then again there are a lot of limitations right it's more kind of a centralized system uh, as well as the flexibility we are having with the apis wasn't there and then i think the security player played a huge role there as well like how you can expose my data now uh, outside the network all these uh, problems came and people were not that comfortable building rapid applications like we see uh, in the current right. uh, context right and, and and i think that that leads right on to the challenge that enterprises have that that uh, the crm guy or the erp guy or the hr guy or the marketing automation or the itsm guy kind of thinks from that lens but the enterprise thinks across the board and enterprises have many applications mm-hmm. even wc2 we are we are a very small company we have less than 1000 employees we have maybe 40 50 applications that are important and necessary for us to operate digitally as a company right uh, i remember when i was in ibm uh, I, i was in ibm research from 97 till 2005 uh, there were about 40000 applications internally right and that's not counting all the applications that are inside spreadsheets right which is tons of these things yeah. so so uh, we build many many applications in the enterprise and the bigger you become as an enterprise what will happen therefore is i'm going to keep building the same thing that some other person i don't know who's across you know some other part of the world some other part of the organization is building right yeah. so that is why that that so in order to go beyond this approach you need to look at the enterprise software engineering problem holistically and look and see what does it mean to be what are the infrastructures that you need in order to get application development and experience delivery in the enterprise to be treated as a kind of like a product line architecture approach or an approach where i'm building a lot of stuff on a common foundation yeah so i think that's where these uh, composability modularity and the reusability is coming and playing a picture right how right. much we can reuse and then build uh, the experiences on top of that uh, uh, in a very uh, efficient way Um, yeah i think gartner calls his composable uh, software practices or something like that right exactly. it's building the composable business exactly. so absolutely i mean composable software practices primarily is uh, having apis having api discovery having uh, governance having reuse uh, having the right kind of uh, carrot and stick approach so people actually reuse yeah. uh, all of those things have to be delivered in order for a business to uh, really stop wasting time and money rebuilding the same functionality over and over again exactly i think there are like uh, we are coming to a good uh, point there because now we spoke about the system of records uh, and then those are kind of common capabilities right any organization can get uh, but then again the uh, the value real value that they can deliver to their end users coming from the applications that they are building on top of that and that is those are the differentiators that um, uh, the organization can offer uh, so the the um, so that's where the digital transformation coming and playing a role and how the uh, this entire enterprise software engineering practices are connecting uh, these two yeah. uh, approaches together yeah I, i think that's a very important point uh you know we, any any company buy, can buy the entire combination of software that another company has mm-hmm. you can buy a service now you can buy salesforce you can buy sap you can buy you know marketing automation you can buy hr you can buy everything basically 
if two banks can buy the same thing or two retail companies can buy the same thing or two manufacturers can buy the same thing, what is the difference? What, what is the difference that I get as a customer? How can you deliver a difference so that I can, you can compete? Yeah. And that difference comes from that integrated digital experience. Right? The processes you have, the ability to automate, the ability to be more personalized, the ability to be more uh, uh, dynamic, lightweight, transformative, all these things come from sitting on top of these things and creating the experiences as as the result of digital transformation. Yeah, and I think there are some uh, uh, kind of organizational changes happening with this as well. Not only a central IT team uh, developing and delivering these uh, uh, capabilities, so even the line of businesses are getting the developers and they are starting to understand the uh, requirements from the edge, like this uh, outside in approach, right? How Because they know exactly what the end users are looking for and start building uh, this application. And that's where the reusability and then having a foundation or a platform to build these uh, applications are coming and playing a role because we can't expect a, a line of business that with set of application developers to uh, get into this complexity of the platform and uh, start building everything from scratch. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think you have very good, very you had a very good point there about the the move from central IT being the one that delivers all digital experiences to the business, to each of the business functions taking control of their experiences saying, we want this thing. Uh, I'm offering this product, this experience I want. And of course you want them. And, and I think at one point there was a system called Shadow IT, yeah. right? Which came in the early days of cloud, which was, you know, IT. I remember we had a customer in 2006, if I remember right, it was a large Wall Street bank. Uh, they they had all the money in the world, but for them to get a server up and running, running, it would take them nine months from the time an order is placed to the time it gets delivered, gets connected to the network, gets OS installed, security hardened, IP address with credentials delivered to the user who wanted the server was nine months, right? And of course, you know, Amazon came around and said, no, that's nine seconds, just swipe the credit card. Um, and that kind of, so that created this whole uh, shadow IT concept. Uh, and, and what happens in the application level is exactly that. And it's happening even right now. These applications are being delivered through Excel, through various kinds of other platforms because we don't have within the enterprise the platforms that empower and facilitate and unshackle groups that want to build stuff by themselves without having to say, let me open a ticket, let me get on your pipeline. You know, you prioritize this versus that. When from my perspective, this is the only priority. I don't care that you have a request from the HR team and something else. It's not my problem, right? right. Uh, and I think being able to facilitate that means you need an underlying platform. You need all the underlying APIs available. You need a way to quickly deploy and operate. Uh, you know, get away from all this nonsense that you typically waste time on and just focus on the value that you're delivering, the experience you're delivering. Yeah, I think that's where the enterprise software engineering as a practice uh, playing a bigger role because uh, still you can maintain some level of governance because uh, you need the governance, right? Like you can't just let everybody to do whatever they want uh, rather than giving freedom, all this nature of self-service and then how they can reuse. But within that particular uh, guardrails that the enterprise um architecture put and uh, let them to operate freely and uh, keep on building the applications. Uh, absolutely, right? So you, you, you can't, this is an enterprise, so you're accountable. You know, many organizations are, if they're public, they have all kinds of uh, reporting requirements. Yeah. You have to have full control and governance and visibility while at the same, same time giving the freedom to operate and the freedom to deliver and, and so forth. So. That balance uh, is, is very, very critical to hit because if you don't, uh, you will either have no innovation or you'll have, uh, uh, you know, legal problems. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, another aspect of this is like look at it from end to end, right? Taking the idea and then uh, go through the entire life cycle and then deliver it. Um, and now it's not the project 
concept, right? It's a product concept and it's a, a continuous thing that you get the feedback and go through that particular cycle. So I think that's where, again, why this is very important for the enterprise because um, as a practice, this is looking at the entire uh, spectrum of the number of things that you have to do to facilitate this uh, rapid application development. Yeah, I, I think the project versus product thing aspect is also very important because nothing ever finishes, right? Yeah. Uh, I think a common tagline, common line you hear about enterprise software development is you write the code once and you modify it 50 times. Uh, it's not like you write it and you're done, right? That's only in toy scenarios. In the real world, requirements are not clear. The requirements are, of course, going to change because the environment you're operating in changes. Therefore, they have to keep evolving. Yeah. So creating an experience uh, and, and then uh, sort of an operating environment. So from an idea to, con you know, initial realization to the second realization, to third realization, to the nth realization, until eventually that idea is not of value. Uh, and being able to do that fast, cheap, and, uh, you know, without pain is critical. Exactly. Yeah, and I think, again, this is a domain that is keep on evolving as well with uh, the cloud technologies coming and playing a role and then uh, moving from centralized to decentralized and then using uh, technologies like uh, microservi microservices architecture and uh, people use utilizing even driven architecture. All these things uh, are coming and helping to expedite the development of uh, applications as well as uh, how you can utilize the infrastructure and then the uh, uh, these uh, capabilities that can improve the application development uh, as well as uh, provide more uh, resilient systems. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the world of technology, if you're going to play in the world of technology, the one thing you have to accept is that change is normal. Uh, whatever you believe, whatever the thing you are passionate about uh, is going to be replaced by something new and more interesting some point in the future. So, you know, in our, in our almost 20 years in WC2, we've gone from XML and SOAP being interesting uh, to words that you, uh, two terms you never use anymore. Uh, and now we are talking about JSON, REST, GraphQL, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, Kubernetes to cloud native infrastructure. Uh, and now AI is coming along with uh, <clears throat> LLMs, probably changing a whole bunch more things in the next five, 10 years. Uh, so change is, is a given and uh, creating that environment that allows the enterprise uh, the key key point that we we are we are trying to make is software engineering is a is a essential skill for the enterprise yeah. now right? that's what it means to be a digital business you must be able to engineer software and enterprise software engineering is not the same as this throwaway one off software engineering where you just consume something and you're done because in an enterprise you're at the same time engineering potentially hundreds to thousands of applications, right? And you need to keep them governed, managed, scaled, secured, evolving, trusted, loved, all at the same time. Exactly. So in Delta Day, like it's helping to um, cope up with the business agility uh, and then have the agility on the technology side and then uh, help moving from these value centers into, sorry, the moving from the cost centers into the value centers and then help uh, uh, providing value to the organization. Uh, so I think it's an interesting conversation. We covered uh, a lot about uh, enterprise software engineering. Uh, any final remarks, Sanjeeva? Uh, I, uh, I think the main, the main thing that we want to get across is um, uh, uh, nothing is constant. Everything is evolving. Uh, you the, and, the, and the purpose of of a business shouldn't be should be to take advantage and deliver value to their customers. Right? And all these wonderful systems that you have to buy and now build are necessary and essential, but they are not where you should be putting your energy on. The energy should go to that experience that you build, so that you are delivering lots of value to your customers, employees, business partners, and so on. 
right? And the employees are just as important as customers because if the employees can't productively do stuff and can't, don't love the systems they they used to have to do stuff, they'll go work somewhere else. Great. I think uh, that comes to the end of this episode and we'll come up with another interesting topic uh, in our next episode. Uh, keep subscribing to our uh, podcast. Uh, thank you. Thank you.